I mean, come on, people. We're the Screaming Divas. Screaming Divas. Oh. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you, who did we interview today? We, I did not know her. I'm so glad that I do now. This was a beautiful interview, in my opinion. Mm. We interviewed this beautiful human being, soprano named Hera Park. Yep. It, Korean. Korean soprano. Yep. Just got a recording contract with Deutsche Grammophon. I mean, people, this is some serious talent, but not only a serious talent, but this amazing journey of how she got that contract, how she got to where she is and the foundation that she's standing on to have this amazing career. So this interview talks about all that. And it really was so uplifting and so meaningful that you really just please listen to this whole interview. She is so, such a positive force in the world too. And she's yes. had so much thrown at her and yet she comes out always with a positive response. And that is the thing that I've, I've taken away from knowing her for the few years now that I have known her is any negative situation, she always turns it into a positive. And that's the kind of people that you really want to surround yourself with. Always and such an emotional singer when she sings and such a great, great voice. Love so it. check out this clip. And what, what do we want to tell everybody that she told us? You I are enough. enough. There you go. There you go. So make sure you watch this people. Not, yep. to, Not to be missed. Stay safe. Hera, you are really using a lot of conditional tense when you're speaking in English. Um, oh. I think I think instead of you say like, oh, I should have, I I must, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe I could have better if I, you know, tried it in that way or that way. Why don't you use the present tense? And she wrote on the board, I am and slash. Yeah. I I I remember vividly how I felt at the time. I almost had a lot of tears in my eyes and the tension between she and me was so, so huge. And I really didn't know what, why, why is she trying? What is she doing? And after 10 minutes of big silence, she wrote enough uh, in that board. There she is. Pretty lady, oh. how are you? My heroes, how are you? Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Now, do we call you Hera or Heisen? I think um, Hera would be good because now that's my professional name, although I am forever Heisen for you. Hera, okay. Hi. Thank you for joining us. And this is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi, this is Hera. So nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you too. So great to see you. How I are have you? A bit of like heartbeat right now to see you guys. It's like so honor and privilege to be invited uh, in this wonderful interview. Thank you very, very much. Oh, you're more than welcome. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm so excited to talk to you about your career and your life. And thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's my pleasure. So, well, well, let's ask first, where are you? Mm -hmm. Now I am in the uh, UK, uh, preparing the uh, opera singing Despina. Oh, Despina, yay. Oh, yay, I love that. And Is you're... it a role debut? <laughs> have you, no, have you actually, done I made a role debut in Bayerische Opa, and this is my second time. So hopefully this time is better than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is always better the second time around. Yes, it is. And even better the third time around, right? Yes. <laughs> Carrie and I, we, we both have sung Tosca a lot. And each time we do Tosca, it's like, oh, that was better. Yep. Oh, that was better. <laughs> Yay. And how are you doing? Like pandemic yeah, and everything. So like, how is your life? And how have you been? Like, uh, what is going on with your life? And I'll let yeah. Carrie go first. Mm. Um, I don't understand exactly what has happened. <laughs> in the last year, but I'm just so happy to see singers like yourself working, singing, 
audience members are coming back. We all need to get back to what we love doing. And, um, and it excites me that you are where you are right now and being able to sing what you're singing. And so, yeah. Yeah. So great. Thank you very much. And Terry hasn't you. been able to sing um, since the pandemic. Oh my. Because the United States just really, they're still wondering. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully because there's more vaccinations happening that theaters wow. are going to open soon. Well, I think the America started to make a miracle again. Like in the beginning of pandemic, I thought like, oh my God, where it goes, you know? But now it shows the, uh, the strength again. So I hope that everything goes back to normal, new, new normal, but it will be, it'll be better. And your family, is, a, is everyone, how have you weathered the storm? Is everyone okay and safe and doing well? Well, my parents are living in Korea and Thankfully, in the beginning, they were handling it very well. So yes. the cases was always very much lower than any other countries, but the vaccinating is quite slow. So okay, um, that's another part. The theater had been closed and then open and closed and then open back and forth. So I had to quarantine like four times for two, two weeks wow. in this year. Okay. So, that was quite tough, but I was very happy to be able to see my parents finally. Sure. And, and um, yeah, spend your time. Yay. Yay. And how is it working there? Are you, do you, are you vaccinated now or are they just doing testing? No, I do have a green card, so I can definitely go to America to vaccinate. But now, you know, like it's the thing, like you've been so free and you had so much time. But now when it's really like, people can can get vaccinated now you don't have time so right I, I cannot go to America right now and here I think of course the resident first and the um, um, citizen first mm -hmm. so I'm just waiting and I haven't gotten anything so I'm sure you guys already got two dozen or how did yeah I got, I got one I've oh, had got, one because uh, I'm in Canada but I get my second one next week what did you get? Uh, AstraZeneca or Pfizer or Pfizer? And I got Moderna. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. I got the next one. I'm going to to the states next week, so I get my second one then. So okay, cool. Yeah. Oh my god, I hope that everything is eased down a little bit after all. I Me too. So. I mean, well, wh where where do you call home now? Where where or do you have a home? <laughs> well, the thing is, I am uh, homeless by choice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the singer life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's singer life, but I literally say that uh, I'm uh, homeless by choice because I didn't sign the contract with any any places. Uh, I'm using my home address tax. Uh, I'm I'm paying taxes in New York with the um, like my manager Jack the address. Mm -hmm. and I'm barely traveling with like suitcases, so I I am definitely a nomad. <laughs> but I think I enjoying it. <laughs> well, you're that. young. You can, you know. Mm -hmm. That's you're so young. You can you can do whatever you want to and write it like the start. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the start of your career. You uh, were in the young artist program at the Metropolitan Opera, right? That's where we met you. That's where we met. Yes. Yeah. And and um, how was that? I mean, English is not your your first language. No, not at all. How um, hard was it? Do it was definitely difficult, I, I have to say. Um, try to fit in this um, culture, and uh, it was totally a different culture, different language from where I, where I was. Mm -hmm. And I went to America when I was 26, so it was quite late. Um, and my English was not perfect, so I always had to try to um, fit in, in, in into this world, a new world. Mm. And thankfully, my colleagues in Juilliard were very, very nice to me and very supportive. And I was the only Asian in uh, my class. So all the friends helped me uh, to prepare the exam and, you know, taking classes. I tried it, need to understand them. The, the lessons or mm -hmm. so I must say I really owned a lot to my friends and I went to met finally I thought wow I 
I, I, it was my dream to go to the Met. So it, now it's all good. But again, I started to have the slump. Do you say slump? Mm -hmm. um, because there's like one story that I can share. Like when I was in Juilliard, it was an ear training uh, class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the teacher was having an argue with the student, which I cannot accept uh, because um, for me, with my culture, you are not allowed to say no to teacher. Mm -hmm. Kind of like seeing if I can exaggerate, you know. But this guy, uh, my student, uh, like he, uh, one of the students in my class, was literally putting his hands in the pocket and then like talking to a student, like, "Oh well, I don't think so. I don't agree with you, like with this gesture." And I was yeah. Like, Oh my God, no, 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 please don't do that. He will want to be so upset with you. But actually he was not. He was very um, open-minded and he said like, oh, okay, I agree that you may disagree with this idea. So why you think that? And um, how can you, how can you explain to me? And oh, maybe you are right, you know? And mm -hmm. seeing this communication that is possible between the professor and the student was like, <laughs> and, uh, Hello. yeah and then I at that time I tried to become a foreigner because I thought it's cool to be able to say no and to be able to yeah. express themselves without you know thinking too much so I, I really like opened my heart and like acted even more big and like shared all the express I can possibly do but the, when I went to the Met, I, I thought that's actually very uncomfortable to me, you know, because yeah. that's where, where I grew was not, you know, not like that. I, it was more, hmm, how do you say? Respect. Respectful and yeah. polite, mm -hmm. more like ease. And mm -hmm. um, even, though, even though you have your thoughts and you, it was better not to really express but like when I tried it to become a foreigner I I started to lose myself more in a way mm -hmm. and interesting and there are so many people that I have to please like including James Levine and many you know coaches and teachers like too many chefs in one table um, yes. with one 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 food that I can digest and I, I became like so much ping pong and ping pong and ping pong. I really didn't know what to do. Some mm -hmm. people were expecting me to be a total typical Asian. And some people say to me that, well, you are very open and you, you, don't, you don't look like a typical Asian, you know? So like, I really didn't know what should I do. Like, I, I lost myself. Like, even I couldn't sing anymore. It was so uncomfortable because I feel like I, 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 I am in this wonderful place that I, 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 I got so much, like, I don't know even I can deserve it, but I am here. So I have to prove myself to fit in and this kind of um, wishing and hoping with the exaggerating um, stress mm -hmm. was enormous for me. And did it affect your voice? I, I, I totally lost my voice because I didn't know what I have to do. Like, um, I couldn't be totally myself and I couldn't, when I tried to be myself, I was unco uh, uh, uncomfortable. What if I look like a doll? Like, mm -hmm. as they described, like Asian right. person is like, mm -hmm. like a doll. So I tried to express myself more, but that was also, it's just like you know confusion like yeah I, fine like i i didn't know what i am doing here um it was really really confusing i must say so i remember you telling I, me that yeah sandra like yeah it's not just like i i didn't like the place uh who, where everyone want to go it was such a such a privileged place to be and i learned a lot i i really had a wonderful wonderful time but mentality 
my mentality was so fragile and so vulnerable mm. uh, as an Asian woman who still see a little bit of racism. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I cannot be really specific, but like it's really spread it in everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I, I had to fight uh, because in Korea, people were like, very proud of me like wow she's in the, at the med and singing there and, and i felt like oh, i don't deserve here you know like mm. there's so many things are going on and i don't know if i'm the right person so i had a moment at the end like i had to go to the med and, and saying like look i i think i don't deserve it i have to quit the, i have to quit the med and the advice from the med was like go back home <laughs> do not sing anymore and just stay uh, calm you don't need to please anybody and right. just be there and it, until until you feel like comfortable to be able to sing again mm -hmm. they let me to be at home so I just spent like a month and two months and didn't sing really a lot at that time I had to sing Barbarina so mm -hmm. just once a week two times a week I just came only for one coach to do the barbarina and that was it and when i was in when i was at home i just listened to some of canzonetta or like little songs like little leader from Brahms or schumann just to heal myself but i really sure. didn't see and then one day uh, my i had an english class at the met and my English teacher knows most of the stories because, you know, when you are talking in English and sharing your story, sure. she hears, right? Mm -hmm. So she told me like, uh, look, Hera, you are really using a lot of conditional tense when you're speaking in English. Um, oh. I think I think instead of you say like, oh, I should have, I, I must, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe I could have done better if I, you know, tried it in that way or that way. Why don't you use the present tense? And she wrote on the board I am and slash. Yeah. I I I remember vividly how I felt at the time. I almost had a lot of tears in my eyes, and the tension between she and me was so so huge. And I really didn't know what why why is she trying? What is she doing? And after 10 minutes of big silence, she wrote enough. Uh, in that board uh, that was a moment and when I said like when I when I broke break down broke down yeah like, that's right you, know, you are unique um because you're only you there's yeah. nobody who can replace you so why I always try to fit in and try to match what people expect from me why I think of the other people's wish instead of my wish my hope my my dream mm -hmm. why i was so used to sing for the others but not for me mm -hmm. and all these questions were solved at the time and allowed it myself to be really really me and accepted that if i have to try more because i'm asian mm -hmm. because of face because of my talent that is like lack of language or whatever then okay, I accept it. I will try hundred percent of the efforts more than mm -hmm. than others. Otherwise, there's no way I cannot always compare myself to the others, or I cannot give up because I love what I do. Actually, I really, really love. So, if you want to keep move full, keep moving forward, then you put more effort and just accept it. You have to. You have to. This is not your culture. You have to accept as who you are and just love you a little bit more. And that was the beginning that I could really blossom again in my heart and I see the flower growing. You could breathe, you could breathe again, right? And just live. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, but the story that you just said is going to help so many people that listen to this, especially I am enough. That's enormous. That is enormous in this business. Something that Sandra and I have both had to learn. I hope I'm speaking for both of oh, us. Yeah. We both have had to learn for ourselves in this business because no matter where you come from, we are constantly judged at all times. And so I think um, I, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that, especially with the racism and and the 
trying to pigeonhole you into something just because of where you're from. And I'm so sorry for that, but I'm also grateful for that journey that you walked through because of that story and, and also how that story is affecting the gift that you're giving audiences now, because now you can come from a place of wholeness and giving and I love that. I think that's just so beautiful. We could end the interview right there. I know. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> well, listen, so is that where, I mean, this is amazing. You're how old? 32? Yes. You have, bing, 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 an exclusive recording contract with Deutsche Grammophon. Brava diva. That you Brava got diva. and recorded your first recording during the pandemic. Am I right? <laughs> yes. And did now, now that story you just told us, I am enough. Is yeah. that where the title came from then? That's right. Well, beautiful. Because it's titled I am Hera, right? Exactly. exactly. Oh. So we have to thank that English teacher. Yeah, She's right. <laughs> we need to hug her. Can she be in my life? <laughs> so how did that feel? How did that feel getting a recording contract? And how did you come up well, with the music that was on it? I must say, it was like when I when I when I was informed that I will I'll be their artist. Of course, I was like, yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> I was super happy, you know, like fuck, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but then, um, but then, when I went to the office, they said. Um, in their history of 120 years of the Deutsche Grammophon, they've never had an Asian soprano or Asian opera singer in their uh, rosters. Oh. Whoa, that's, and, that's insane. That's insane. No, so but you're, you're a first. I am the first and I thought like, wow, why me? <laughs> No, I was I was scared and I couldn't I couldn't enjoy anymore once I in heard such things and I I I was absolutely scared and I started to have so much pressure and these things came back again like oh my god why me you know like I don't deserve it there's so many wonderful musicians out there like, why why they chose me i don't understand i'm i i'm lack of this and that and this and that and that this came back again after like oh. years years later uh since i realized that i am enough and i totally forgot again and i oh no and then i started to tremble and tremble like freak out and i remember like the story of like i am enough and that relieved me again and that's why you know what i know that of course, this uh, this interview's name, uh, interview uh, platform. The name of this is like screaming divas. <laughs> Actually, I am not a diva. I'm like far beyond from being diva. I don't see myself as a um, as a really like diva figure, you know. So I thought maybe maybe I can I can share my message, my story to the audience. Um, I wanted to uh, tell them you are enough. Um, you don't need to try to become like a wonderful diva like Carrie or Sandra. That's maybe not me, but what I can do is maybe I can be a wonderful supporter um, and then um, singing, like it doesn't need to be like huge ro roles, but I, I will appreciate what I can do the most uh the best like uh i i i that's why i chose mozart uh, and the rossini and this kind of roles that has a lot of main characters but mm -hmm. doesn't, anybody doesn't come like alone like everyone has their own right. beauty in their roles yes so, this unification and then reuniting togetherness is more important than just like so, uh, mm -hmm. so that's I wanted to definitely that's the thing that I wanted to share to the audience and that's how it all became and I am very grateful that I could I could record the first album uh, during the pandemic I was the first one uh, who record 
after pandemic started through Gramophone. So it was very wow. experimental um, okay. situation for every every members of the, the company. Mm -hmm. so they were bravely acted and um, I I cannot I cannot be more grateful. That's amazing. This is yeah. such a wonderful story. I'm so glad I met you and I'm so yeah. glad I'm listening to this today. To really see you in person and uh, I, I would love to give you a huge hug and I know nice. and I cannot wait you to go to the stage and I will definitely send a lot of pray and I will definitely bless you. You Aww. know I'm so devastated I mean devastated to go to the stage. I feel for you and my heart is like very yeah. you know I, I'm I'm very sorry but that will come it will, it will come I pray so Thank you, you put you put some Korean songs yes. on your album. Yes. Talk to us about why and the importance of your your history, your tradition, your all of that, your music, mm -hmm. and why you did something like that. Um, as a person who is singing always the foreign with the foreign languages. <laughs> I wanted to give a chance to another listeners or singers uh, for them to sing the Korean song in the future um, because our language is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the track called Yonko Manara Kanin Param Gachi, it's like start with the uh, sadly, sadly, but not too sadly. The text is like going that. Uh, but actually you cannot really express uh, the the real meaning of that 섭섭하게 섭섭하게 그러나 아주 섭섭치는 말들 it's more than sad it's more than depressing it's more than losing the hope it, it has more meaning on that but it's mm. impossible to say it yeah. in uh, different languages mm -hmm. and that's kind of the beauty in every languages, I think. And I wanted to show the Korean also has that. The same. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, even though we have it, and even though you cannot understand what I see, what, what is the meaning of it, the translation, until you see the translation, but you feel something, and that's the power of the music. Uh, so if I can, uh, I, if I am able to sing another languages and then another operas, then you can also. And please allow me to sing the foreign languages, operas, and you know I, I can do it because I feel as much as you feel. And I wanted to kind of challenge them in a way with this idea. Also, um, uh, the second song, Psalm Twenty Three. Uh, is about home it's uh it's from the bible and it goes like um even though the life is not so easy i will follow your path i i i i will leave in i will leave in your home mm. you know? uh -huh. your bird i will i'll leave in your home and the reason why i chose this song was as a nomad and homeless by choice <laughs> i started to value how important to have a home in you. Um, if you don't have a home where gives you a lot of comfort and, mm -hmm. and happiness, if you are not giving yourself the comfort and happiness and joy and uh, peace, mm -hmm. then you will never able to find um, the same thing in the, in the outside. Right, That's in a physical I'm, home, right, uh, yeah. I love that. That's a, you know, you're so right as far as the lang the different languages. I mean, we're so used to singing in the standard what four or five, and and why not? Why not push that envelope and say why aren't we adding Korean songs and Korean operas to standard repertoire? I get it, and I love that. Good for you. That's an, an amazing platform, and I'm so glad you were given the opportunity to have that platform to do that, and that they said yes. That they said yes, we want those songs on the album. That's so cool. Very kind of them, yeah. yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but your manager, Jack Mastroianni, yeah. was retired. Yes. And Girl. He came out of retirement <laughs> for you. Sorry, what Amazing. He, he came out of retirement just to, to 
to manage your career. Yeah. So that obviously means that you are enough. <laughs> a very powerful agent. He's that's huge. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Jack? How did how did that whole relationship start? Um, so I was in Juilliard at the time. Again, it was very beginning, early, early period of Juilliard time. And um, we have we have a class uh, guided by Mary Lou. She's inviting a lot of people, uh, for example, like um, manager, agency or PR manager or techs. Mm. Uh, how okay. do you say it? Accountant uh -huh. or a photographer or um, criticize people. How do you say in English? If someone who is a critic, this, critic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Critics, critics, or like so many different people. And one day she brought Jack Masterioni and me. And at the end of the um, class, uh, she asked all of us to ask one question, one question each. And I, you know, like at that time, still like I was like having a like tram tremble like. <laughs> The palpitar in me uh, to say mm -hmm. loudly in front of everybody to speak in English, you know. And then it was my turn. I was like, okay, <laughs> as an Asian girl, um, do you think it's also possible to be able to make a career? Because I never seen anybody when I went to the, the, the med shop, opera, you know, med gift shop, I never see anybody who is making the cover um in the dvd you know i i don't think that we can really like make a career but do you think do you think asian also can make a career that was my question like you said so much like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. chinese and he he said yeah um if you uh, he said like yes I don't know anybody, but I, I think you can. That's what he said. And I don't know how he can say that because he never heard my singing before. But anyway, later, uh, Maestro Richard Boni came for the master class. And at the time, Jeff was there. And um, I, so, Richard, Sir Ma, Richard Bonin gave me the cadenza the day before, and I had to sing in public um, very next day with a new <laughs> cadenza. So I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did it, and he was very surprised. And he he literally like announced to the public saying like this girl is very brave because I just gave her the new cadenza just yesterday and. I didn't know that she was gonna fix it right away. I expected that she was gonna fix like maybe later mm -hmm. in the future, but I, I really didn't expect that. Like she's so brave. Like, can you sing another aria? And normally, you know, every everybody sang one aria, but he asked me to sing two arias, and oh. it was a very successful masterclass for me. And later, he he went, and Jack Jack came out saying like. I would love to know more about you. And what I meant is like, if you meet the right person, you can definitely also make a career. And so yep. slowly like build it up a career. Um, so it was, it was lucky for me that he been there for me from the beginning. Wow, that's amazing. That's an awesome story too. <laughs> right place, right time, isn't it? it, it like, also, there is like one thing that I also wanted to mention because um, in Juilliard still I was a student, right? So my professor suggested me to hold it, not to work with manager yet. So I went to Jack and said, Jack, look, I really appreciate your offer, but I think this is for me the time to study and to develop myself. So I would love to not to have a manager right now. And I just, you know, that that was really the idea. But he said, okay, I understand you. Then I'll be a career advisor instead of being a manager. So you take your enough time until you are ready. So he waited for me until I can say like, now I can work. So right. very patient and wow. considering person. Um, so that's also that I wanted to mention that he's 
was a wonderful person to me. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. so great. You have so many great stories to share with us. It's <laughs> awesome. So, so I guess, um, not having a home, yeah. you know, being a, a nomad by choice, yeah. how much longer? I mean, do you, do you like this lifestyle? Do you want to keep living like this or do you want to have roots? Um, it's, it's, you know, like Sandra, like I feel like sometimes, sometimes you love what it is right now, but sometimes you would love to have a place. It's like going back and forth when you, like, when you can, like, there's a moment that you don't need a place when you mm -hmm. find an amazing place uh through the airbnb right where you can stay for two three months like you would love to invest more mm -hmm. uh, to live in the present with a better option better house better apartments because you're not double renting you know so yeah. right. save a lot of money so right. you don't need to worry about those kind of thing and your life already has been so much minimalized so you're spending more money for cooking and food so you become healthier so that's actually very very um uh, great advantage um and i i think that's the most uh advantage i feel like i don't need it because i really am happy like in the present and before i become an opera singer i wanted to be an architecture or like oh, a cool. furniture designer okay so see these kind of you know things are really right interesting. um but there is a moment that you would love to have a place just you know time to time but i think more or less i'm more close to the uh, nomad yeah I, I um, early on in my career or when it started moving and I had to travel everywhere, my husband and I just said, why let's do, let's live like that. Let's live like nomads. We called it gypsies. Let's live like gypsies. And we put everything into storage furniture that I really wanted to keep antiques and things like that. And we got on the road and every, we had such an awesome time. So I would work and then we're like, where are we going to go next? Because I have a month off or a month and a half. I need to kind of coach and have access to that, but where do you want to go? And yeah. we, we lived like that for about three years. And I think I would have personally, I would have kept doing that because it was a way to see the world. But my husband finally said, Carrie, I think I need my own bed and I need my own pillow. Like I'm tired of sleeping on everybody else's pillows. <laughs> I, I definitely understand so that's and then we bought our first house because it was like okay well then where do we actually want to go and let's buy something and we bought something on the ocean and we and that was we had a blast we lived there for I don't know five or six years or something yeah. and um but anyway I so I understand you I get it I know why you want to do it and why you want to keep doing understand it. you that finally you needed a place so yeah. I think one day but not now yet but not but now that oh. yes, will come to me in, yeah. in a way in a way when when a singer an artist is at the stage that you're at it can kind of weigh you down too having things having having a home that you have to constantly worry about whereas now you're just free and if somebody calls you and says hey hair are you free to come sing blah 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 you're like yep i'll be right there yeah. instead of you know having to think oh well, what do i do with the house and who's going to look after it or the apartment or you know it's just we we did have that i did have the moment of uh what did we do because now i'm in london singing and there's a hurricane coming through toss coming through florida and i can't be there and you're just like what did we do why did we do this <laughs> but no i mean it was uh you know you'll figure it out your your mind and your heart are going to tell you when it's time to do what you need to do so good for you Thank so you what's coming up what's what's new and exciting the next step in your career if and, you can hear so i'm now preparing the despina and we are thinking of the we are talking about the second album so i'm now like cool. the program and uh, that's that's also very fun because you know this Deutsche Grammophon really allowed me to open my my eyes and make me to be uh, curious because I always have the doubt in me even though I know that I am enough but this doubt made me grow and um, like 
I want to say one day in my life, in the end of my life, I want to say like, you know what, you, you, you nailed it and you deserve what you have. I want to say it, but now I am more um, cautious and try to be careful and try to be even more humble, um, not to say that yet. Okay. That really allow me to uh, wonder like, wow, so what is the, the history behind of this? And because they chose me, I have to represent well and then how like oh um so what is the relationship between the the science and the art what should i do as a person who is like a like a bridge between like uh, classical and modern or west and then east and then to to understand this you better to study oh shall i go back to the doctor degree and then i had a phone call with <laughs> julia the director and then she said like no way <laughs> <laughs> love it no and I, the doctor degree like i want to study more i feel like i i, I there are so many things that i still have to learn and he said no but this is like forever education like you can learn in one one time and what you are describing is not close to the doctor getting the you know, certification mm -hmm. or like constant um, wondering and developing. Right. So why don't you find the people who are also the same and then make a class together, reading a cool. book and having a discussion. So this really allowed me to be very busy because I, I wanna know more and I, I want to say one day like I deserve it. Um, and then we'll say it for you. You deserve I it. I go to Canada. Yeah. Come. I go to Canada. Anytime. Anytime. Yes, I go to Paris and then Canada. Yay. So, Yay. But by then I think you're leaving. When are you when are you singing in Toronto? Yes. What are you doing? So we're supposed to do the Tapule di Montecchi. Oh, cool. But uh, because of pandemic, I think they're changing the repertoire slightly mm. differently. Uh, and I just was informed that they're going to do the Gianni Skiki and uh, as a concert version. So I have to prepare another opera, but um, that's why I can go to Canada. Nice. Yay! You're going to love it. It's beautiful. Carrie's yeah. sung up here a lot too. So I love it. Oh. Yeah, we, I know. Yeah. We have a lot of fun up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting. So you have a lot of fun things coming up. Yay. Love it. What do you think of um, modern music? Do you like modern music? Like 20th century? I, I do. I do. Um, it, it's challenging. And I think that's why I like it. It not because it's so beautiful, but it made me to think and like it made me to allow myself to be more open and like why they had to go this far to make this kind of music which is like very loud or very ugly or very dramatic mm -hmm. why why it had to be like this mm -hmm. and you try to find your own answer and that process is i think very valuable and that's why i i like it i don't know if i can sing it um, if I have an opportunity, then I will definitely say yes. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I you the, did what, the seven deaths of Maria Callas. That's actually a very simple one. Like I sing Is only one aria, and that's it. Oh, like, oh. <laughs> and then like shh, and then like okay. disappear. So Bye -bye. it's a very simple thing. Um, yeah, but um, the production itself can be interesting. Oh, cool. Wow. Well, you have you have a lot going on. I mean, I'm so glad that we we could talk with you today. Um, it, yes. And, and thank you for sharing what you shared. I, it's yeah. it's it's big. it's enormous. It's huge. And what an impact it can have on so many people, even though I, I hate that you had to go through all of that. But I like I said, you know, I'm just I'm grateful for the impact that that can have on other people. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I listen to you really like you are right. You're right. Oh. Everything has their own reason, you know. They do. And although it was not an easy time, but definitely um, without that, I would, I would not me as who I am right now. Yeah. So and beautiful. And I, I hope special. other people listen and, and follow your advice, you know, that I am enough. 
But you know, Sandra, I think you've been a huge impact in my career because you, I, I mean, I mean, like, oh my God. <laughs> Sandra is always making me cry. You know? Oh, I know. She comes to my dressing room. I was like, ah, it's okay. It's so beautiful. Ah. Like, okay. You she said, a, what you said that. one day, I hope someday I can sing. I mean, Queen series at the time. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell this. And I hope people hear because Sandra was just like, oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um I was in the I was in the seat because you know Matt gives always the free ticket so I always always there whenever Sandra comes I was there love it like, so sweet like what the first day that I saw her the cotton goes down oh my god I never cried like this after hearing such an opera I I felt like uh, I have to leave right now, otherwise people are gonna look at someone. Someone just passed out, or someone just like, me, like something happened, you know. <laughs> Could have called the paramedic. Myself not to not to see her. So although we never met, and you know, like middle of nowhere, I jumped to her and I just started to cry and then hug <laughs> her like you are just like you're so bad you're such a bad person you made me cry so badly <laughs> <laughs> i remember that I'm like nice to meet you you're a bad person <laughs> like, like, people cry like hell you know like i was like That's I was, <laughs> it's true it's true nothing is exaggerated it's like so true i'm sure <laughs> it's the Some truth i was like who is this crazy girl you know she and I didn't say that, did I? No. And one another story that continued <laughs> after that, Sandra told me like, oh, we have to have a coffee or we have to have a chat, you know? And I didn't, I didn't, I never thought like, how come Diva can say that, you know? Come on. I can say such a things to a nobody, you know? You're not a nobody. And then, and then later I saw her, um, and definitely she texted me, you know, I, I texted her and she sent me back. And next time I went back to her backstage, seeing her performance. And she remembered my name and she told me like, oh, you cut your hair. It's a new hair. And I cried again. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I thought, who is this girl who was always crying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I call that fangirl. You fangirled out over Sandra. You know what? We're gonna um interview Renee Fleming, and I'm really worried that I'm going to act like you with Sandra with oh. Renee. Like I might oh. fangirl out so much. So I'm totally loving this whole story because it's awesome. Yeah. And how can you not fangirl out over Sandra? I mean, she's <laughs> amazing. So you totally yeah. want to fangirl. Listen, we've been friends for a long time, but every time if I'm in the audience or on stage with her, I still want to fangirl. I freak out because it's amazing what she does. Oh, you guys, stop it. Stop it. We love you. We love you. You're amazing. And I'm so oh. glad you guys met so that this could happen because yeah. what a cool um, chat this was. I love this chat. Yeah, but now I'm so honor, really. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm we, honored. We want to know if you're up for it. We do rapid fire questions. Sure. <laughs> you're up for it? <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask the okay. first one because I really want to know this. Okay, go go on. What is the most beloved thing that you own? What is the most precious thing that you own? And my precious thing I own rice cooker. <laughs> 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 oh, do you travel with that oh my god that's the thing that's why I, sometimes i want to have a home because like traveling with rice cooker is like pain in the but but the booty mm -hmm. it's like oh one another extra um cost you know but yeah. you bring it like i i bring rice cooker Mm -hmm. and the electricity sheets uh cover bed sheets i don't know if you, oh, you know yeah that. do you have it oh my god this is so good when it's like so cold and like here in london sometime when it's raining it be very chill yeah and water is not so hot i don't know why and then 
after water, you turn on the, the heat and you just jump to the bed and then like yeah. burn yourself. A heated blanket. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. I love it. Okay, what talent other than your own would you like to have? What talent I would love to have? I would love to, um, I would love to have a talent um, of packing. <laughs> packing talent. Packing. Oh. <laughs> I, am I just so want packing. somebody to pack for me. Yeah. That's all I want. Well, I that's want exactly to... what I want also. Someone... I, want, I want to hire somebody. What? Okay. What is your greatest fear? Ooh. Yeah. Losing my, my, my family. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that could be, especially mom. If, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's going to be serious, but sincerely will be the biggest fear I might have. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. What is your favorite word? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my, that's your favorite phrase. Oh my I, God. Oh my God. Oh God. Whatever. You say that a lot. Yeah, I think I say a lot. Oh my God. Yeah, I think. You, who yeah. is your, who is your celebrity crush right now? Right now? Mm. You see, I've been quarantining for seven, eight days and I already finished four seasons, like 10 episodes each for four seasons. The Last Kingdom. I don't know if you Ooh. saw that. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the. I've yeah, I know what you're talking about though. Is there is there a hottie in there? Half naked body, men's are fighting like hell. Oh my god! Oh my god! There we go again. Oh my yeah. God. You see? <sighs> okay, so, so amazing. So all now, those I'm, guys in there. Really, you have to see. It's it's really interesting. Okay. You can learn the medieval century of the UK, how it became all united. Okay. This is also fascinating for me because I'm always seeking for the identity. And this ma major uh, actor is born was born in in England, but raised because of war. He was sold to another, you know, Viking. Okay. Oh. Having these two identity in one person, how he struggle in between, it's also very fascinating for me. But so, extra sugar, half naked body men fighting each other for the world. Yum so, yum. <laughs> did you totally just go like this? I did. <laughs> no, I drop it. Right? Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. Okay. 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 My favorite question. Well, I have two favorite questions to ask, and we paint. We switch up. But one of them is, what is your favorite cuss word in any language? Uh, cuss word? What is that? Swear. Like a swear word. A swear word? Yes. Do you have a favorite one or do you not use, a, do you not use swear words? I think, um, I think I, I, I like fuck. <laughs> I don't know. That's, That's me. A general, everybody likes that word. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not really using a lot, but when I use it, I say, oh, fuck, I say it. <laughs> it sounds that, really good coming out of your mouth, too. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. so bad. No, it sounds elegant for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. No, I wish no. mine sounded like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, what? Well, you just kind of answered that one because you watched the whole series. But what movie could you watch over and over and over again? Is it that series? Oh, the, if you're talking about the movie, I can all watch um, Titanic over and over. Um, yeah. Nice. Do you cry yeah. every time? Yeah, I do. I do. And I can watch the friend over and over and over again. Oh, oh, oh my, my God. God. Did you see the second? Yes. <gasps> yes. Just... Yes. Oh my I gosh, I freaked out. Yet. Oh, I, I, I love friends. I could watch that endlessly forever I could watch friends I'm so glad that it's on HBO max now and then the reunion came out I mean I'm sorry I was such a sap and I was totally crying like at near the end of that how could you know I mean it was crazy I loved it I thought it was so awesome so which one of the guys would be your boyfriend <laughs> friends yeah Joe Ooh. Okay. I like a little bit of stupidity <laughs> 
<laughs> you like him a little dumb. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think he's very, uh, very charming in the, he has his own charm, you know, his character is just like, very... how you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> or I can, I can date with Brad Pitt because he was also in the Friends, you yes, know? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> I would take, I would any, any day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Carrie. Last question. Okay, you asked both of them today. Oh, I will. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? If, ah, if heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say as you walk through the pearly gates? Oh, wow. Wow. What a question. You, you guys are working on it. Um, welcome back. There you go. You are enough. Oh, you're enough. You've done it well. Welcome. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. I want to know yours. What what would you say? Oh, Mm. mine's, mine's, I think Carrie and I might say the same thing, right? Mm, Yeah, but I have the funnier version. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Carrie has the funny version, which is? Um, here's your sister. Here's your dad. They're, but they're back there at the buffet table. So you got to find it back there. Buffet, all you can eat. All, all you, you can, can eat. eat table. Ah, feast. Yeah. yeah, they're at the feast table. Your dad, your sister, your grandma, everybody. They're all at the feast table. And there's no calories. No calories. No, no calories. calories, no carbos. No, no. No fat, no sugar. No, no none. Sugar. Yeah. No, yeah. All you Tons can eat. Sugar. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine would be, here's your father. Because I, I, I lost my dad when he was really young. So yeah, here's your daddy. Yeah. Um, you guys, I think that's the most incredible question I've ever been asked. Oh, wow. Good one. We, we cannot take credit for that question. That question came from an old television show called Inside the Actor's Studio with um, James Lipton, who has since passed away. And I loved that show so much and loved how he talked with the famous actors of the time. And he always had 10 questions that he asked them at the end. And the last one was that, and I always love to hear their answers. And so we totally stole it. And thank you, James Lipton for that question. What a question. Isn't it good? It is very good. It is very good. Wow. That's great. It's so wonderful to see you again. It's been too long. So nice to meet you. We can hug you in person. I love you both and bless you very much. I hope you remember that you are enough and I bless you. Oh, thank I, you. I you really, really. You are terrible people. Oh, thank you. And toy, thank toy, you. toy there, okay? Yes. All the toys and all the love and blessings back to you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye.